What's up YouTube, Webus5 here, coming at you today with the update to my Endymion, pure Endymion deck profile. Now before we get into the profile guys, I want to do my shoutouts as always, so first up, shoutouts to, again, and quick apologies if I happen to pronounce any of these wrong. But, so, first up, shoutouts to Lid and Lie, Brandon Coates, and Dave of the Dead for requesting this. And also want to give a massive shout out to Brian Plays Yu-Gi-Oh for helping me do some testing on Dueling Book to figure out where I want to get the deck at the moment. Thank you so much for all that, man. I really appreciate it. And, and also, he, he Brian Plays Yu-Gi-Oh also recorded that match. So if any of you guys want to check it out, the video is in my Endymion playlist. But I'll also leave a but I'll also leave a link to it in the description below. Without further ado, guys, let's get into the profile. Okay guys, so starting the profile off, obviously, three of the big guy, triple mighty master, because he's the main, main monster of your deck, essentially the main reason you main reason you win, he's your negate, he's your board wipe, don't really need to explain too much about it, I did do the massive explanation of his effect in the first deck profile I did, and guys, as much as, as, much as some of you might appreciate me doing so, I am not going through the entirety of his effect again, because he's the Yu-Gi-Oh card with the most amount of text, and I don't have that guy in his time. Uh, next, triple copy, triple servant. Uh, it's just at the start. Naturally, she's your start. She's your startup card. Mainly, main low scale, main low scale. Pretty st standard. Then triple, ma triple magister as your ex as your extender and your high scale. Pretty. Uh, Monster, Monster Effect's pretty useful as well to remove three spell counters from your field in your opponent's turn to drop one from your deck, so that adds a nice little bit of disruption as well. Uh, two copies of two copies of Reflection. Uh, she makes a nice optional scale to pretty, pretty useful if, say, I don't have these spell counter resources to summon Mighty Master off his own effect to put a spell counter on him. I can just special summon from my hand using reflection and then he's got the spell counter on him so I'm good to go for his main effect. And she's also one of the main things I like to summon off the Magister. So summon it in your opponent's turn and then bounce something which is pretty nice. Uh, that's it for the main, that's it for the Endymion monsters. Then the other part of my deck is naturally because it's spell counter based it's the mythical beast so playing uh, three, three copies of Master Cerberus as my main turn as the searcher of the deck and also the be searcher and beta. Uh, triple triple jackal triple jackal king to get mythical beasts back out of the extra deck and also to and also monster effect negates which are really which is really useful in this deck. So basically basically one of the ideal fudge you want in this deck is a couple of jackals a few Jackal Kings and maybe one or two, uh, about two to three Jackal King and then one or two Mighty Master. That's like your ideal board with this deck. And other Mythical Beasts I'm playing, two copies of two copies of Jackal, just as a way to get the Jackal, just as another way to tutor out Jackal King from my deck. He's also like a really good option of what I like to use of summoning off Jackal as opposed to the Cerberus. Cause I can, cause if I've just got say the, say I've just got, say I've opened a jackal and a jackal king, I can go summon jackal, get the three spell counters, tribute off, special summon a jackal king from the deck, activate jackal king as a scale, pop itself, special summon back jackal, jackal's effect again, removing another three spell counters to special summon another jackal king, then I can just pendulum some of the third one out of my extra deck. So pretty useful like that. Uh, I didn't. Uh, he is one of the cards I like to use as my normal summon as well, which is pretty good because I don't really use my normal summon in this deck. I don't feel the need to play th as much as I like to see him to start setting up. I don't really feel the need to play three because since I play things like Mythical Institution, which can search any of my monsters, and he's a level one, he's really easy to search anyway. And then last card monster I'm playing, one copy of Mythical Beast Garuda. Not so much for the pendulum effect of the back row removal, even though that is very nice. I'm primarily using for his monster effect, which lets me bounce, which lets me disrupt an opponent's summon by returning that monster or monsters back to the hand. Uh, some people I've seen are playing this at two. I can understand what 
I can understand why, because I've seen some people tend to just play one and find a way to get a spell counter on it so they can bounce it with Mighty Master, but two, I can actually see just to have that additional option as well. But yeah. But yeah, I'll just see as the format progresses if I want to pump this to two or not. So that's it for the monsters I'm playing. Moving on to the spells, starting with three spell power mastery, such as such as any of your endemian such as any and all of your endemian cards, then adds an additional spell and then adds additional spell counters through its own effect. Definitely want to see one of these starting off, and then mid to late game it just gets even better. Uh, two, ter uh, two terraforming and three citadel because for a pure variant you want to be able to spam out your spell counters quickly so naturally citadel is the best way to do so i've actually seen some builds which are playing this at two and two which i have been which i have been debating over but frankly i'd really like to be able to see this because i know i can search citadel with spell power mastery but Ideally, I don't want to do that, and ideally, I do want to always be able to see my citadel. And if I and sometimes if I find that I'm seeing it too, and I never really find I see it too much, but it's one of those cards that I can take one, I can take one to two of these cards out when I'm siding for games two and three, and it works fine. Uh, next, triple mythical institution. You open th open this and a mythical beast. You s basically start searching like absolutely crazy. Institution gets two spell counters every time a mythical beast on your field is destroyed by battle or card effect. And you can remove any number of spell counters from your field to search a monster whose level is the same as the counters you removed. So that's why it's that's why it's really good. So it can search. So this card basically searches your entire deck, and naturally open that with a mythical beast. Open this and Cerberus, and you're going to start generating spell counters like mad. Uh, next, triple mythical bestiary. Uh, I, th I threw this in from a suggestion from Brian Plays Yu-Gi-Oh. He, recommend uh, he recommended this just as a way to like try and turbo out your spell counters quickly. So, one of the ways that you can try and force the effect of your servants, turn one which ideally you kind of want because Servant will set you up. And Bestiary has a nice little secondary effect that if it's destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you just get to special summon any monster from your deck. You can put a spell counter on and put up to two spell counters on it. From that, I don't know why it says up to two. I mean, I don't know why it says up to two. You'd ideally want to, but naturally I understand that some monsters actually have a capacity of how many they can hold, like Break of the Magical Warrior. But not that you play that. But yeah. Yeah. Also, I find that with three of this, it's another good card that's easy to side out as well. Uh, next card, Triple Call by the Gr Triple Call by the Grave, because when you get... Because when your Cerberus gets ashed, you kind of cry inside. And this is kind of... This kind of stops that. And also really good... And also really good to disrupt things like Ghost Ogre, which naturally is like cancer for this deck. So, f furthermore, Call by the Grave. It's not a once per turn. Sp it's not a once per turn spell, so it's just a really good. So, it's also just a really good way to quickly generate spell counters. Next, my chosen draw power. I'm still going with Triple Pot of Extravagance. Uh, I thought about playing Pendulum Hold, but since I'm playing the pure variant, I don't really get Pendulums into my extra deck fast enough to be able to use it. Uh, Desires is okay, but personal, but I kind of go back and forth about Desires. Like some formats, I'm like, yeah, okay, I like it. Other formats, some other formats or builds, I'm like, no, this ain't working for me. But Extravagance, I have no problems with. And frankly, if I don't open Extravagance, then I'm free to go into the Electromite, which I have been doing a bit more frequently now. I mean, I naturally still don't need the Electromite to win, but naturally Electromite is a good option to have. My only issue about Extravagance is when I open it on my first turn, it's just spell counters being wasted, but still, it's fine. I like it. And then my last card, 1-Up Start. 
Quick, quick draw, quick spell counter. Simple as that. Really sucks when I draw an up, draw an upstart off the extravagance, or subsequently draw the extravagance off the upstart. But hey, that's the risks. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Going into the extra deck. Not that I really use it too frequently. Frankly, the only monster I ever really summon in this extra deck is Electromites, for obvious reasons. Don't really need to go into that. And then, because of mine's an extravagance build, I'm just playing high ratios of the monsters I do go into, so... Triple Day... Triple Daybreaker. That being said, I haven't actually summoned this yet, but... I like his effect, and he's a pretty useful... But he's a nice extender as well. He's got a nice... Link Arrow, so good extender. And his effect's really useful as well, so... Yeah, play that. And... Double Book. Double bar load, just as a nice, remo nice removal option of like unkillable monsters. Not difficult, not too difficult for you to spam multiple monsters, effect monsters onto the field because you're a pendulum deck. And also, frankly, you resolve Magister and Servant, you've got four monsters straight up. Uh, double, double Nightmare Unicorn, Double Nightmare Unicorn as another form of spot removal. Uh, I was thinking about playing things like Phoenix for back row purposes, but um, but then I was in the position of like, do I play Phoenix, do I play Cerberus, do I play both? But then I'm just like, you know what, I can just play Unicorn, and then that covers both. Uh, triple Crowley, just as, a just as a decent generic link that points in the ideal places. And the ability to summon things like Jackal Kings, Master Cerberus, Mighty Master for free. Not bad. Uh, two Underclock Taker. Just quick generic, quick generic link. Uh, don't really. Uh, again, because it's an extravagant spell, I don't really make it, but still a nice option. I have actually been thinking about maybe re-altering my extra deck slightly, just in case I wanted to try like Super Poly with various targets for that, because there's lots of good Super Poly targets at the moment. And then last card in my extra deck is the Xyz. I'm playing two copies of Bamboos and Gossip Shadow, which you can make using two copies of like Magister or Servant or a combination of both. Uh, it's 2600, 2600 defense, which is pretty decent and has the ability to stop a monster effect and make it so that both players draw a card instead. It's also a spell it's also a spellcaster, which is pretty useful in terms of my side deck, which I will get to in just a moment. Okay, so that's it for my extra deck. Uh, going into the side deck, playing three Phantasme, because links are a massive links are a massive thing right now, and it's a good way for me to like dig for good cards. Other side deck options. Yeah, Phantasme is just so good right now. Uh, triple sp triple sphere mode. Uh, this is just one of those cards that people like to debate about. You like, uh, do I play sphere mode? Do I play lava golem? Do I play kaiju's? Uh, so I kind of just based mine a bit off my locals. I'm noticing at my locals, I'm getting a lot more Endymion players and decks that swarm a bit more. So that's why I've gone with sphere mode. Uh, next in my side deck, this is a newer option I've been trying in after re casing my side slightly. Uh, I'm playing three Secret Village of the Spellcasters. So this is just really, so naturally this is a really good way for me to get around spell specific matchups, which is pretty good. So things like Sky Strike, so that's things like Sky Striker, uh, uh, doesn't work so well in the mirror match because naturally it's a spell based, because they're spell caster based. But if you do it in the but it is a solid option potentially for the mirror match because most Endymion decks aren't pure. They play like the standard Electromite Turbo engines. So if you can do that going first against them, then at least they can't foolish they can't foolish burial. It means you've stopped the special summon of the Dark Worm, and you're also stopping the special summon of like the Curtain Razor if they use it. So, good way to slow down in the mirror match, and just generically good card overall against a lot of the meta. Like, as I said, you do that against Sky Striker, that's, well, basically the, ga basically the game. 
next up, Triple Cosmic Cyclone. Choosing, uh, choosing this over things like Twin Twisters, because I don't. Because one, I'm not overly fond. One, I'm not overly fond of the discard. I mean, it's not so bad, but frankly, at my locals, I get lo like a lot of players are playing stuff that like prevents me from destroying things. So Cosmic Cyclone just removes the problem straight off, which is pretty nice. And, frankly, I wanted, like, a little bit of extra rarity in my deck, so I went with the Ultimate Rare Cyclones, which are really nice. And, finally, last card in my side deck, Triple Red Reboot. Uh, I might be think I've actually been thinking about cutting this, simply, simply because I'm not really getting too many trap matchups, but it's just one of those I'd like to... Have I'd rather have the option than not have the option, particularly since things like Orcus now have that stupid counter trap, which I don't like. Uh, Salaman grades, things like Rage, Raw can completely mess up my board, and actually Guru control. Uh, also, things like Mystic Mind, which do, if they're playing the burn strategy, probably, uh, yeah, I think that's probably one of the main reasons I'm keeping it in, just because of the stopping metaphor stop the metaverse so they don't mystic mind me not that the deck struggles too badly against mystic mind but still just in case okay guys so that's the deck profile hope you all enjoyed it feel free to leave a co feel free to leave a comment down in the description below if you on what your thoughts are about the deck and in case some of you guys checked out some of my recent videos and are wondering is that an endemian field center where was this god the answer is yes I do now have an Endemian Field Center. When I decided to commit myself to the deck by getting the deck, the sleeves, the playmat. I think the only thing the guys at my local said you're missing. Oh, whatever. Well, the only thing you're missing now is like the field center. So, yeah, I found a way to pick up the field center. That being said, if anybody is wondering how I picked up the field center, I know a guy on eBay that does custom that does custom cards. He also does custom field centers. He's also the guy who sorted me out my channel field center. And he also did the one I requested for Dark Petition 84. He also did this one before I did my custom one. And I didn't request this one, but it's one that I found when I was looking for a field center with this Dark Magician goal. So yeah, his name uh, his name is Danny Beisel. I will leave a comment and I will leave a link in the description to his channel. And he's also on e he's also on eBay. He's pretty simple to find. But um yeah. But um, yeah, definitely if you guys are looking for like custom field centers, I would highly recommend checking them out because you guys have seen these. These are quite nice. I really like them. He does really good quality and for a really decent price. So yeah, definitely recommend checking him out. But anyway, thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Webers5 and if you're already subscribed, feel free to hit that notification bell so that you never miss an upload.